What were the top sprint jump hurdle competitions of the 2023 year? Well, I'm going to give you my personal list, including eight different competitions and a few honorable mentions. The key phrase, my personal list. You may not like my picks or even the order that I put them in, but you can always go in the comments and let me know which ones you prefer for the 2023 year. So first off at number eight is the men's long jump final at the Budapest World Championships. This event may have flown under the radar, but it was a truly close competition. Both Miltadis Tentoglu as well as Wayne Pinnock jumped 8.50 meters in the early rounds, but Pinnock held first place based on his second best jump of 8.40 meters. But in that final round, Tentoglu jumped 8.52 meters, just barely edging out the gold and relegating Pinnock to the silver medal, which was his first global medal. But behind both of them was a battle for bronze with Kerry McLeod sitting in third for most of the competition with 8.27 meters. Then the 2019 world champion Tajay Gale also jumped 8.27 meters on his final attempt, taking the bronze medal based on a farther second best jump. One also notable thing is that considering the relatively low standards in the long jump this era, Budapest was actually the first time since 1992 and just the fourth time in history that the gold and silver medalists at Worlds or Olympics jumped at least 8.50 meters. Next, I have the men's 200 meter dash semifinals at the NCAA championships. Now, there were multiple top players as we enter the NCAA championships when it came to the 200, and it was arguably a very, very wide open field. But in the semifinals, we saw six guys all run sub 20 seconds, all personal bests, and all booking their ticket into the final. Udodi Onuzurike of Stanford and Nigeria led the way with 19.76 seconds for the third fastest time in NCAA history. NCAA 100 meter champion Courtney Lindsay of Texas Tech came up for second with 19.88 seconds. Then we had Tarsus Orgat, Robert Gregory, Javante Harding, and Sean Masongwani all running 19.9 seconds behind the top two. Now, in the final, we did see four guys run 19.8 in a very, very close finish, and you could argue it was a better single race, but as a collective competition between all three heats, the NCAA men's 200 meter semifinal makes my list. Moving over to the Diamond League, let's talk about the women's 100 meter hurdles at the Monaco Diamond League. Now, there were actually a few 100 meter hurdle races that were insane this year, but the Monaco Diamond League race stood out for its depth of marks across the top women. Nia Ali took the win in 12.30 seconds, which was a world lead at the time. But she was followed closely behind by Kenny Harrison's 12.31, losing out by just a lean at the line. Both women were followed by another close finish for third with Alicia Johnson and Tia Jones, both of them running 12.39 seconds, with Johnson ultimately being given the third place spot. But that fourth place finish from Tia Jones turned out to be the fastest fourth place finish in the history of the 100 meter hurdles. So overall, an amazing race. But I also do want to slightly shout out the Poland Diamond League as well as the Eugene Diamond League final, which also had amazingly deep competitions in the 100 meter hurdles. Next, I have the women's 100 meter dash final at the Budapest World Championships. This had a plethora of high stakes and storylines going into the race. Defending champion Shelly Ann Fraser Price was injured all year, but looked to be timing things perfectly for Worlds. Sharika Jackson was the world leader at 10.65 seconds and the silver medalist from last year. Marie Jose Talou, she was extremely consistent running 10 sevens all season. And then of course, Shakiri Richardson. She was having the season of her life culminating in making her first global championship final. And guess what? Shakiri, of course, running out of lane nine, not only won the gold medal, but also broke the championship record with a time of 10.65 seconds, moving her to equal number five all time in the 100 meter dash. Along with that, Sharika Jackson's silver in 10.72 seconds was one of the fastest non-winning times in the history of the event. And finally, Shelly and Fraser Price in third won her sixth world championship medal in the 100 meter dash, 14 years after winning her first gold all the way back in 2009. Also notable were Dean Asher Smith and Tamari Davis, who had the fastest times for eighth and ninth place 100 meter finishers in history. The men's hurdles at the Prefontaine Classic made history in more ways than we initially saw, making it my number four. Karsten Warholm coming off a gold medal in Budapest, as well as a loss to Kyron McMaster in Zurich, would again finish second place here, this time to Rai Benjamin, who had won the bronze medal in Budapest. Here in Eugene though, Benjamin ran 46.39 seconds to Warholm's 46.53. That 46.39 from Benjamin was his second fastest time ever, only behind his legendary 46.17 at the Tokyo Olympics. 
That was also his first win over Warholm with both of them actually in form. As we all know, Warholm was injured at last year's World Champs when he finished 7th. But to further highlight these times, Benjamin's 46.39 was the 4th fastest performance in history, while Warholm's 46.53 was the 7th fastest ever. And even more notably, this race pushed Kevin Young's legendary world record of 46.78 seconds from back in 1992 out of the top 10 performances ever, which was a truly remarkable moment. I actually made an entire video about this, which you can check at the card above. Finally, Maggie, Bassett, as well as Allen ended up with the fastest 7th, 8th, and 9th place performances in the history of the 400 meter hurdles. Now, before we get into my top three, here are a few honorable mentions that were extremely high quality competitions all throughout 2023, both indoors and out. So I had to give them a quick shout out. Also, I'll leave a link in the description for where you can find all these kind of best marks for place in all the different events, both men and women, that I'm referencing throughout this video. So coming in at my number three, I had to throw in the women's 200 meter dash at the Budapest World Championships. Out the gate, we know that Sharika Jackson dominated by running 21.41 seconds. Not only a personal best, not only a national record, not only a world championship record, but also the second fastest time in the history of the event and only seven hundredths of a second off the world record. But the storylines continued behind her with Gabby Thomas running 21.8 seconds, one of the fastest losing times in history and making her return to the podium after injury in 2022. Finally, Shakira Richardson's bronze medal in 21.92 seconds, personal bests and following up on her world championship gold in the 100 meter dash. And that's actually the second fastest time ever for a third place finisher in the 200 meter dash. Gabby Thomas actually has the best time with her third place from the Tokyo Olympics. At number two, I have the women's triple jump at the Budapest World Championships. Now, the jumps, specifically the triple jump, are always overlooked relative to other events in the sport. But in my opinion, this was one of the greatest competitions of the entire year and for a long time in this specific event. Yulimar Rojas was a clear favorite going into the competition as the defending champion and world record holder, but she struggled early on only jumping a best of 14.33 meters. Throughout the rounds, we saw Marina Beckromanchuk jump 15 meters, Lianis Perez Hernandez was able to jump 14.96 meters, Shanika Ricketts 14.93, Thea Lafon 14.90, as well as Povea 14.87. But in the sixth and final round, Rojas pulled out a clutch jump of 15.08 meters to take the lead and grab the gold medal. But what was so notable about this specific competition was the complete depth of marks. Prior to 2023, in the 20 year history that the women's triple jump had been contested at the world championships, only three times did it take a minimum of 14.80 meters to get on the podium, 2011, 2003, and 1995. Here, not only did we see 14.93 not get on the podium, but 14.87 meters only got you six, meaning it was by far one of the deepest competitions in triple jump history, and of course, one of the best overall throughout the 2023 year. Finally, my top competition of the 2023 season was the men's 200 meter dash at the London Diamond League. Now, this produced not only some of the fastest times of the year, but was easily one of the fastest in history. First off, Noel Laos took the win in 19.47 seconds, which was not only his third best time of his entire career, but also the 10th fastest time in the history of the event. That also gave him his fourth time at 19.50 seconds or better throughout his career, which matches the total amount that Bolt has. And yes, we all know Bolt has faster times overall. We know, we know. But Lyles was pushed to line by Latili Tobogo, who ran 19.50 seconds, moving him to number six all time in the event. And this was truly monumental as it was not only a personal best, but also broke the African record of 19.68 seconds that Frankie Frederick set all those years back at the 1996 Olympic Games behind Michael Johnson. Finally, Zarnell Hughes, who was already having a legendary season, finished in third place with 19.73 seconds. That shot him up to number 19 all time in the event and also took down the British record of 19.87 by John Regis set back in 1994. It was also just off the European record of 19.72 by Pietro Minaya. Additionally, 19.73 is the fastest third place time in history. Because of the performances, not only as it related to these guys in 2023, but also as it related to the history in the event, the men's 200 meter dash at the London Diamond League was my number one competition of the 2023 season. But as I noted at the top, these are just my picks and my opinions. 
Go in the comments and let me know what sprint, jump, and hurdle competitions you found to be the most exciting of the 2023 season, both indoors and out. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Be back again next time. Thanks for watching.